I'm Susanne Rose from Germany. I'm a mixed media artist and a stamp designer. And I love making art because it's just my passion. I enjoy the process very much. I have a lot of fun creating art journal pages. And I love to combine and explore different colors and different ways of mark making. After this course, you will be able to create your own intuitive art journal pages. I am looking forward to see you there and let's make more art. Hello everyone, welcome, welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome back to another live demo here with At Your Studio. I'm your host, Marion, and I am joined here with the wonderful Suzanne Rose, um, who will be demonstrating how to make uh, mixed media collage pages into your journal. Uh, let me know in the chat where you are watching from. I see here people are really excited. People are already talking in the chat. Um, hello, Susan from Ontario, Canada. Hello, Beth from Winnipeg. Peg. Um, I hope it's a nice spring day where you're at and I hope the allergies are not killing you like they are me um, <laughs> and you're enjoying your week so far. Um, so a couple things to get started here. Everything that you need for this demo is located in the video description of this uh, video. Um, there is no reference photo, so uh, it's a very intuitive process that Suzanne will be demonstrating. Uh, we'll start the video pretty soon. If you have any questions about the process, about Suzanne's inspirations or anything at all, please feel free to put it in the chat. If it is relevant to what um, the video is demonstrating at that moment, I will ask it to Suzanne. Otherwise, we will save it at the end of the video demonstration and we'll do a quick Q&A. OK, um, again, feel free to just ask anything in the chat about uh, today's subject matter. Um, and until then, um, I'm going to go ahead and bring it on over to Suzanne. So why don't you let us know what we're doing here today? Hi, um, first of all, I want to say hello, and I'm happy that you are here. And I want to share a little demo on how I make my abstract um, art channel pages. I often start out with watercolors and then play with mixed media on top. Um, and that's it, that's it what I, I love doing. I just play and explore, and it's totally intuitive. So that's the reason why we don't have a reference photo for this for this demo. Okay, awesome. Um, so just in the chat here, we got Ellen from Pennsylvania, Debbie from Holland. Uh, yeah, India, Texas, New Jersey, very wonderful. Uh, getting much needed rain today in New Jersey. I'm sure that's a great reprieve. We definitely need our rain. Um, okay, so I'm just going to start the video and we'll go ahead and have you start talking. <clears throat> All right, this is what you're doing. Yeah, and I, I'm, mm -hmm. I usually play um, just with with um, a color scheme in mind and then I start my page and I, yeah, it's, it's intuitive. It's watercolors, collage, other mediums like crayons. I will use a lot of them today. Um, yes, mm -hmm. this is also all, um, all pieces that are similar to the ones I will do, to the one I will do in the mini workshop. Okay. For the first layer, I am starting out with watercolors and um, I have this color scheme in mind. I usually keep a sketchbook for my color schemes where I try out different combos and then I use those on my pages. So I make sure that the colors are working together and that they don't create a big mess when I mix them. Um, I'm using a big brush because I try to uh, fill big, big areas and stay loose with the shapes I'm doing. I'm working in a watercolor sketchbook it's from a German brand, I think from Kunst und Papier. And I clip the pages together so they don't buckle because the paper is not super thick. So with a lot of water, it might buckle a bit. Um, I switched to a smaller brush to 
bring in some of the blue color and to let that flow into the wet area. And that's what I love doing, just playing intuitive and see what the paints are making, because that is, I think, a fun, a fun thing that the watercolors create sometimes really amazing effects. I also don't have a composition in mind. I start and then I look at the page and see where I think I need a certain color or a certain shape. And here I'm dipping in some of the core watercolors. These are the, the high flow watercolors, which means that they are pushing other pigments away. And this can create really interesting effects. And I will play a bit more with those in the in the 19 minute wor minute workshop. When I have uh, too much water on my page or I feel it's a big puddle, I just damp the brush and soak that up. Did you start with a bunch of water already on the paper, or was is it like wet and no. okay? I just start with with the first with this big red circle, and then um, I often add a little bit of water to it so that the color flows into the water. And um, I know that my colors that I've picked will mix well together, so they don't create mud. And that is something that might be a bit important when you play an abstract with watercolors because the color flows into each other and you uh, if you mix the wrong colors you will cre create a brown or muddy color i dried that um in between because now i want to go on top with more layers because i really love when you layer these transparent colors over each other that can create really um, nice effects usually i would not use a a dryer um, when I'm working at home, I prefer using more um, art journals and work on one page. And then when this has to dry, I lay it aside and then I work on another page. What I also sometimes do when I have a busy day, I start out with an abstract spread and then I play 10 minutes and let that dry. And when I have time in between, I come back. Here I'm just using water to reactivate the paints that are underneath. And this creates a really nice texture. I love that about watercolors. They are usually used um, to paint really, I would say realistic paintings. And I love to use them in that abstract way. I think it's it's just fun. Um, I really enjoy it. And I also am not afraid to mess something up because you always can um, collage something over it if you don't like an area. Here I'm um, starting to paint a leafy shape. I really like to combine my abstract work with something realistic like leaves or flowers sometimes I'm adding birdies and I think painting that in with a negative shape is just a little bit more interesting than painting it directly on top and also if you want to have something light on top with watercolors you have to use a different medium like acrylics because watercolors are not opaque The brush I'm using is a mop brush. I get that asked very often and I really like it because it takes a lot of water and it has a really fine tip so that it's easy to create this, these sharp edges I have here with the leaves. In the 90 minute class, I will also talk a bit more about um, how I am inspired by nature and which elements I like to use and how, yeah, how these come together. 
what I also like is adding um, just some water and painting with the water and then dragging lines, for example, into a wet area of paint like I do it here. And then the paint will just flow into the water and I think that is a really nice effect. And again, if I if I don't like something or um, or so, I don't mind that. I just will stick something over it later in the process. Suzanne, can you talk about how you're making these intuitive decisions? Like, you know, it was really interesting that you painted those blue lines from that circle down. Like, what made you feel like? Mm -hmm. to be, yeah. Yeah, well, that's uh, that's a bit hard to explain because there is not that kind of a recipe. Um, here I'm using a watercolor pencil um, and I dip it into my water from time to time. So I get a lot of pigment of it and a really intense line. And I just love to use this technique to add in more texture and interest. And that's a really fun thing. Um, coming back to your question, uh, I don't really know how to explain that. I look at my page and then I think, well, what what is missing? Where can I add something and which color do I need? I always try to use um, a white tonal range so that I have really dark colors and also really light values. And this is also something that I know before. Or I'm starting because I know usually which colors I want to use. And that also is something that balances a page. And that was the reason why I used the blue for these blue lines. What I also do is I step away from the painting a little bit and have a look where I feel that there is something missing. I now dry everything. I think I'm done with my watercolors. I really enjoy using collage on these kind of pages. And here I'm um, grabbing all my papers I, I'm using today to, to build up this page. I have sorted out some papers with similar colors. I always use colors that are matching the spread. And it often takes me a while to figure out where I want to stick things down. I, I would stick things down over areas that I have messed up and um, that I don't like. And also I um, use papers that are similar in color so you can you can see it here. I really like that light green and I connected it to this light green circle. And here I'm thinking about adding that rainbow. Um, that's by the way, a jelly print printed on rice paper. It's a super thin paper, but that rainbow is too much on the page. I feel against that leafy shape and I, want to have that leafy shape as a focal point, kind of. So I just decided to not use that rainbow. Um, I often have a view through my camera onto the page when I decide which paper fits or which element and which not. Here I'm using um, that red because I feel that can be a bit more red and you can see depending on how you tearing the paper you get a white edge or you get just that colored edge and also often I use a scissors to cut the papers so I have different edges of the papers which also gives me different texture and more interest. When I don't have the camera on um, I often um, look at my page upside down to decide if a layout looks good or not. 
And what also helps is taking a mirror and looking through the mirror onto the page. That gives it a completely different view and you can see in which area you maybe want to add something. Here I've cut two tiny circles and I don't really like that half circle underneath and I will use that paper instead. It's also a rice paper printed with the jelly plate. And if you um, go to my YouTube channel, you will find some collage paper videos. So in case you are planning to make the 90 minute workshop, you maybe want to prepare some collage papers for yourself. I'm using a simple glue stick to adhere my papers. Um, that's a quick way. Um, it has no drying time, and I think it's perfect for a sketchbook. Also, um, I think gel medium for collage over watercolors is a bit tricky. You have to be very careful not to activate the paints again. Yeah, I usually um, do not add too much papers. Here I decided to just cut a tiny leaf to bring that leaf back. And I felt that the red from the collage paper on the top um, should be in another area too. I always, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I always look at that the colors I'm using are not only in one spot. So this intense red, I wanted to have somewhere else. And so I decided to add that leaf in this color. I now want to blend in this area with the, with the big circle because I feel it's, it doesn't look good. It's just a feeling. I feel that there is something missing and I will do this with, with acrylics because they are opaque and will work on top of um, any type of medium, so on every paper. And I'm mixing kind of a light green that is matching the spread. Depending on the brushes you're using, you can create different marks. And this is also something I will dive in a bit deeper in the 90 minute class. And again, it's, it's just kind of an intuitive play, deciding where to put what. Here I picked a smaller brush to create some other or different mark makings and patterns. And it's also something that's really fun to explore which tools will make which pattern or mark on your page. There's an interesting question here about the collage that you're doing. Is this representation of a particular mood or is there a message in this collage? Oh, no, I would say um, it's really just um, just what I feel is right on the page. And here you see me, um, make, how I make some of my collage papers if I have leftover paint. Mm -hmm. I just wipe it over my paper and I always use a simple paper as my paint palette and everything that is left over will be smeared all over that paper. I will clean, the, clean my brushes on that and that gives me the most beautiful um, papers, I think. And now drying the acrylics, um, I plan to go on top with some crayons. I will use the Neocolor crayons, but you could also use oil pastels, for example. Um, I usually use a sheet of vellum or scrap paper or transparent paper to lay that in between my pages. So if you're using crayons, they won't transfer to the other side of your journal. 
And here I'm using my leftover paint paper sheet to try out which color I want to use. And I believe that is the Chinese green. And I use that to highlight these green squares a bit more so they are matching the colors on my page. And this is also something I really make intuitive. I, I feel that I need some yellow lines on the right side, so I just add them. And I try not to be precise. I just try to, to leave my hand loose. And I don't want to make something exact. I just want to create some texture. I searched for a darker color, and I thought I want to add something really dark to the bottom. But then I decided that I didn't like the crayon and something that is really good about the new colors. These are the number two, by the way. They are water soluble. So I just decided to use water and a brush and paint that away and have a crayon a little bit of more texture with that paint. What I'm hearing is that even if you think you made a mistake or you don't like something, it's very, you can still fix it or work with it or do something. Yeah. It's not yeah. the end of the page. Yes. As a, well, that that's, that's, um, I'm never afraid to ruin a page. I, if I do something I don't like, I would, if, if that would have been an oil pastel and I couldn't have um, used water with it, I would just have wrapped a, a blue paper and stick that down. I'm now going in with the Posca paint pens and just create some more patterns. I love to make tiny dots. I really like this. And it's really interesting how many different parents you can create by just making dots. It depends if they are small, are they big, are they all in the same size? Do you use different sizes or are they far apart from each other? That's all. Um, you can create so many different patterns with just making some dots. And this is what I also do with the collage paper. I scribble a bit on it, also with the crayon before, just to get some nice papers for future projects. I will now dry the area that is still wet with the blue part, um, because I don't want to lay my hand on that uh, when I'm drawing the botanical elements. If you are not, um, if you don't feel safe drawing directly with the Posca pen over your page, I would just recommend using a pastel pencil or yeah, maybe something light, not, not a usual pencil because I don't know if you can erase it easily under the white uh, marker. So maybe a light pastel pencil and then you can draw your shape and then redraw it with the Posca pen. I do this very often, so I just I just draw it. And if I make a mistake, I maybe would just glue something on top and draw something new. The Posca pens can be a bit tricky on watercolor paper. If you're having the small ones like I have here, they have a plastic nib. And when the paper is too rough, you can get splatters. Um, so sometimes you have to be a bit careful with them. Yeah, and that's, that's, the, that's all I'm doing. I'm creating something abstract and I enjoy the process that that's the thing why I am making art. I really enjoy that. And I'm looking forward um, every day to the next creative time I have where I can create. 
and it's not about the final piece. And I feel when I add something realistic to the abstract, it it gives it kind of a story. I will also talk a bit more about my inspiration and how you can find your own motifs that are related to, to yourself a bit more for your work. I'm done with the page. And what I will do now is I will prepare the spread that we will be doing in the 90 minute workshop because I want to use some table salt with the watercolors and that has to dry um, on its own. And so it would be a bit difficult to do this in the 90 minute workshop because it takes a little bit of time. I'm working in a Stratmore watercolor journal here. And the blue I'm using is the, um, it's called the Indian Tree Blue, and it's from Rosa Gallery. That's a company from the Ukraine. And they make really nice watercolors. And I'm going just to do this first layer. And we will keep on working on that spread in the 19 minute class. I decided to let that flow off my page because it was such a big pool of water and I thought that might be a nice idea. The salt will create a really interesting texture, but I believe that a lot of you that are painting with watercolors know about this technique. Okay, and um, it needs to be air dry, right? Because you can't like. Yes, I think I'm using a blow dryer will not work. Mm -hmm. You can see in the dark blue areas there is some texture from that salt. Yeah. Sorry, everybody. Okay. There you can see it in the darker blue areas, these first started with the same technique and this creates a really nice texture. Yeah, yeah, we can see that in this. Um, oh, awesome. So this is what we're doing in the 90 minute class and it sounds like uh, you should prep your page with some color and some salt textures first before um, joining the class. The yeah, great. The link is in the chat to sign up. It is on um, June 14th at 10 a.m. Eastern time. Um, and uh, and as um, Suzanne has been saying the, the whole demo, uh, she'll go more into detail with layering. Is that right? Could you kind of, um, again, recap what people will learn exactly in the 90 minute class? Yes, we will definitely do um, more different textures. And this will also not exactly be the same piece we are going to make because I'm playing intuitive and I can tell you before how the final piece will turn out. Um, but I will um, talk a bit more about how I'm creating textures, how I make my color combos. And I will give you a little peek into my color sketchbook and how I work with it. And we will, of course, add more layers and more more stuff because it's a bigger journal. So I have a little bit more space to play. Yes, and I think we will also talk a little bit about um, the inspiration where I get my, my floral images from or um, what I use as as ideas for my patterns. Okay, great. I also posted the link to your uh, YouTube videos again, where you kind of walk through how to make your collage papers. Uh, yeah. yeah, so uh, uh, yeah, uh, come prepared basically. Uh, get some collage papers put together and <laughs> you know, kind of start off with some salt textures in your watercolors and you'll have a very fun 
therapeutic, I think, uh, 90 minute yeah. Suzanne. Um, just kind of watching you put that together in the video was very soothing and <laughs> you know, very nice and zen <laughs> for us here. Um, you like it. Yeah. Uh, so we did have some questions in the chat that we'll kind of go through now. If you have any other questions for Suzanne, now would be the time to um, uh, ask them. Uh, so you kind of touched on this a little bit earlier, uh, but just to reiterate, uh, what subjects usually inspire you to make your abstract pieces? I'm mainly inspired by nature. I would say I, when something grabs my attention, I take photos of it. Um, I also love to flip through botanical art books. Um, there are so many vintage botanical books with um, botanical drawings inside that is really inspiring. What I also love are books about different patterns that also can be really um, interesting and then trying to interpret them in, an, in a simple way with watercolors. And that um, also gives me ideas what I can paint. Wonderful. Um, and then any tips on how to not overdo the abstract pieces? <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I, I sometimes overdo them, I think. So um, I think it's just a practice and play. And it's an art show. Um, if you have overdone a page, then do the next one. Okay. And I, what I try to is always keep a white space. Don't cover the whole page into paint and paper. That's something I, I like, that there are areas that are white. Mm. So leave negative space, leave some breathing room, try not to cover everything. Yes. Okay, which is something I do. I definitely try to <laughs> cover everything and I lose all my whites. <laughs> um, and this is an interesting question. Would it be advisable to use ink alongside watercolor? Oh yes, of course you can. Um, you can use different mediums. I also have similar pages made where I used um, watercolor pencils, the ink tense pencils. <laughs> and just, um, I just draw with them on on the on the spread. Well, I, I scribble with them really much, a big area, and then I mix them with water and create these big shapes that I've done here with watercolors. And you can definitely do this with ink and other mediums. Okay, great. Um, and I think those are all the questions I'm seeing so far. If you guys would like to um, squeeze another last minute question into uh, the chat before we wrap up today, uh, it would be a good time to do that now. Um, I'm posting the link one more time to Suzanne's 90 minute class. Again, it is on June 14th. Uh, I believe a Tuesday at 10 a.m. Eastern, um, and you will be able to support Suzanne, uh, you know, by by signing up uh, for the class. Um, it is also just seven U.S. dollars and free for subscribers, and you're welcome to sign up for a seven-day trial using that link that I just posted in the chat. Um, and then uh, if you had a really great time today, you're welcome to spend a couple minutes filling out the survey uh, just to kind of give us some kudos or let us know what we can do better. Uh, your feedback is really important to us. I'm sure Suzanne would love to hear um, how you guys enjoy uh, this uh, demonstration. And if you happen to follow along with the demo, you're also welcome to uh, post it on your Instagram and tag Suzanne um, and hashtag at your studio as well. Um, I'll go ahead and put that up here on the um, screen. Sorry, words <laughs> right now. Um, and uh, if you also are a part of our at your uh, fam Facebook group, you're also welcome to post your work there and tag Suzanne. Suzanne, are you a part of that Facebook group? Yes, of course I am. Okay, great, beautiful. <laughs> so you're, of course, welcome to also just tag Suzanne and um, you know, post uh, your work as well. I'm sure she'd love to see it. Um, if you like feedback or if you have any other uh, ongoing questions, you're welcome to ask her as well in the Facebook group. Um, I'm sure she'd love to see what you guys put together. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yep, and in the meantime, of course, you're welcome to just follow Suzanne on Instagram. Uh, her handle is right there on the screen. Um, and yeah, if you can uh, 
you know, let us know how we're doing and uh, fill out the, the uh, survey again so that we can uh, see what is working uh, as far as what we're doing right now. Um, just some comments here for you in the chat, Suzanne. Uh, there's a lot of thank yous and beautifuls. You are very inspiring. Um, thank you. <laughs> I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, thank you, Miss Rose. You've been very inspiring. A lot of inspiring. Um, here. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> that is really wonderful. Thank you all for watching um, and spending your time with us here today. Um, and I think that's it. So I'm not seeing any more questions. Um, if you missed the beginning part of this live, you're welcome to rewatch it. This does stay on our YouTube channel. Um, and until then, we will see you at the 90 minute class. Uh, Suzanne, any last words before we call it a day? Yes, of course. Thank you for being here and thank you for watching. I really enjoyed that. And I'm so looking forward to this 90 minute class because I love uh, to inspire others and I love to to show that it can be so easy to make art. Great. Thank you everyone again for your time. Have a great rest of your week. Until then, make more art. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.